Do you want to raise chickens out on pasture in chicken tractors? That almost rhymed. <laughs> If so, this is the video for you. In today's video, I'm gonna show you every step, everything I do to raise my family's entire chicken, all the chicken we could possibly need in a year. We're, we're big, and we're a big family. How we raise that out here on pasture, in chicken tractors. If you're thinking about raising 10 birds in your backyard or a thousand birds for the market. You're gonna learn a lot in this video of how we do it. We've been doing this for years. Let's dive into chicken tractors, pasture and chicken, how we raise a year's worth of chicken out in our pasture. Good morning, welcome to today's episode of Homesteady. I'm Aust. I have been raising my family's meat for, well, almost a decade now. We haven't purchased meat, we don't need to. We raise all kinds of different animals here on this homestead and we've been doing it a long time. Today we're gonna to talk about how you can raise enough chicken for your family out in a chicken tractor. This is part of a series where we've been showing you everything you need to know about raising your own meat birds. So if you've missed the first couple videos, go click there, start back at the beginning, and you will go through the process. Today I'm gonna to show you how I work in the John Siskovich chicken tractor. We use John Siskovich chicken tractors. You can click right there. That'll take you to a link on my website where you can purchase John's plans. I have worked in and around a lot of different kinds of chicken tractors. I even one time designed my own, the Homesteady Chicken Tractor, and uh, while you could watch that video, I really don't suggest you build one of those. I like John's version better. It's the best chicken tractor out there. Nothing's perfect, and even in his book, John encourages you to customize it to your own needs. It's kind of like a modular thing where you build the basic frame and the basic thing, and you learn a lot of skills along the way, but customize it how you like it. But I 100% back up John's plans. I think they're fantastic. Also, he's got a lot of great other chicken resources, so check that link for his chicken books and chicken resources. Let's go feed some chickens. They're hungry. The morning chicken chores always start out here at the barn. Our chicken tractors are located up on a hill, so to get the feed and the water up to the chicken tractors, we need mechanization. <laughs> if we didn't have a UTV or a tractor, we wouldn't be able to do chicken tractors up where we do them, it just would be too manually intense. And uh, actually, we don't really have much pasture down at the bottom of the hill, so basically we wouldn't be raising chickens in a chicken tractor. I take a 50 pound bag of feed from the barn where it's stored, and I fill some five gallon buckets with feed. The five gallon buckets work a lot better than a feed bag when it comes to pouring into the feed trough, which you'll see up at the chicken tractors. Also, instead of carrying a 50 pound bag all at once, if I put it in three different buckets, I'm only carrying about 12 pounds at a time. That's a lot easier. So I fill these three buckets up and then we will drive up to the chicken tractors. Once we're up there, I'll show you how I move them. I'll show you how I feed them. I'll show you how they get water. Everything involved in this process. I have a bungee cord in the back here. I wrap it around all my buckets to keep them from sliding back as we drive up the hill. Now let's head up there and feed some chickens. The whole reason you want to have chickens in a chicken tractor in the first place is because you want to have some grass-fed chicken. And you probably want some grass-fed chicken because you know that nutritionally, it's more nutrient dense, it's better for you. There's plenty of stuff out there to show that, you know, Google it. <laughs> we like having grass-fed chicken, but these Cornish cross chickens, well, they're not highly motivated. They kind of lack motivation. They need a little encouragement. If we put them in the barn, open the door and said go, they wouldn't. They just sit tight and eat out of the grain bin. So we put them in the chicken tractors so they, they get access to pasture, but also at the same time, they're protected in the chicken tractor from predation. Hawks, coyotes, you name it, there's lots of things out there other than you that like to eat chicken, and the chicken tractors do a really good job of keeping our chickens safe. After about a day in one spot, we have to move the chicken tractor because the grass gets either eaten or soiled. Cornish crosses poop a lot, and I'll show you what it looks like behind the chicken tractor versus in front of it. In front, you see lush grass, dandelions, 
bugs, lots of things for the chickens to enjoy. Behind it, well, it's a bit of a wasteland, lots of poop and leftover feed. But it's not a wasteland because that's all manure, nutrient, which is good for your soil, good for your pasture. So what you leave behind your chicken tractor will actually improve your pastures over years and years of pasturing chicken. So great thing to have on a homestead. Great closed loop, you know, permaculture, bro. Permaculture, bro. The first thing I do when I come out here to do the chicken tractors is I move them. Once they're done moved, then I can do the water and then I can do the feed. Let's move the chicken tractors first. I'll show you how easy this is with the Siskovich tractor. Very lightweight. One of the benefits of a Siskovich tractor, it is made out of lightweight materials. It's very light on wood. There's a lot of small metal conduit, which very strong but lightweight, easy to move. A guy my size, uh, K can move them. I mean, they're really, really very user friendly. So let's move them. Once the chickens are on nice green grass, the uh, chicken tractors have already been moved. Now it's time to feed and water the chickens. One of the things I really like about John's design, and he encourages you in the book to do this, is uh, the hanging of the chicken tractor feeder, and we hang the waterer as well. That means every time you lift your chicken tractor up and move it forward, the chickens walk forward, and the feed and water come automatically with you. You're never having to go in and move anything forward. So that's one of the nice things about this design. You'll notice our feeders and our waterers are hung, and they're hung with cinch straps. So as the chickens grow taller, we can easily adjust up or down the height of the feeders and the waterers. The first thing I do when I come up here after I move them is water the chickens. And that's because our water system, which I'll show you in a minute here, it takes a little bit of time uh, to work. So I get the water going. Our waterers are five gallon buckets with poultry drinker cups in them. Out on pasture, it can get pretty hot. You don't want your chickens to only have nipple waterers out on pasture. They can die of heat stroke on a really hot day because they can't get enough water to gulp down to cool them off. So you want to make sure they have a lot of water to drink. Bell waterers don't work well inside of the chicken tractor because as you know, a bell waterer, if you've ever used one, you have to take it apart to fill it. And I don't want to go into a tractor, take apart a bell waterer, carry it outside, fill it, put it back together, go back in and hang it. The less times I go in and out of that tractor, the more efficient my morning routine is. That's why you'll see in the back of these chicken tractors, I have a five gallon bucket with a lid on top, holes drilled in the lid, and poultry drinker cups coming out of that five gallon bucket. The lid on top of the five gallon bucket ensures no chickens wind up in the water, drowned, or at least wet all night. I've had it happen, that's why there's lids. The hole drilled in the top allows me to slip the hose in without having to go into the tractor, so that's one last time I have to go into the chicken tractor to water them. My kids can water from the back, they never have to go inside, it's very, very simple. And the poultry drinker cups allow the chickens a really nice guzzle of water while keeping things nice and efficient. Here's my warning. I love hate these poultry drinker cups. They work fantastic, these waterers work great, except for these cups do have a tendency to get clogged. I'll have a link below for them. Spire beware, they will get clogged. They're not difficult to clean, you have to take them apart, you get a little piece of wire and punch it through the hole. To give you an idea, we've been running this batch out here for a couple weeks now and I haven't had one clogged yet. I gave them a real good cleaning at the beginning of the circuit. But if I run another batch of chickens, I will have to clean them all again. Pretty much every batch of chickens you raise, you're gonna have to clean the cups at some point. It's annoying, I usually keep a spare clean one so I can change it out quickly if I need to. It's something you have to pay attention to so your chickens don't run out of water and all die. But I haven't found a better solution. Comment below if you have found a good solution for you know, chicken water inside a chicken tractor. It's the best I got so far, and overall they work really good. Just remember, you will have to give them a good cleaning, and having a lid on top of the waterer will decrease the amount of times you have to clear them, so just know that. So how do we water them? Well, we have a really cool IBC tote system. Let me show you how this works.
Let's talk about how we water the chickens up on the hill and the chicken tractors. Because the chicken tractors are up on a hill, we can't run a hose to where they are. We don't have enough hoses long enough and the pressure isn't strong enough to pump the water up the hill. So we have to bring water to our chickens on location. And a lot of you may have to deal with something similar, whether you're raising chickens on someone else's land, or you have them in a section of your yard that's just too far away from your water source, you may have to bring your chickens in the chicken tractor water. There's a lot of different ways you could do this. We used to put five gallon buckets of water in the back of, our, in the, back of the UTV, the gator. Uh, put a lid on the buckets, and then when we got up to the chicken tractor, pop the lid off and dump the water into the waterers up in the chicken tractors. But lugging around five gallon buckets of water, I mean, if you've ever listened to our show, it's like literally the example I always use of inefficiency on a homestead. Hauling buckets is literally the term I use to describe something that is just not efficient and is a waste of your time and energy. So as you can imagine, I did not haul buckets very long. I thought of something else that would work for us. Because we have a tractor, we're able to do this, but you could mimic this system with something different. Uh, we take a IBC tote, which can hold, I think it's 250 gallons of water in an IBC tote. They come in different sizes. The cool thing about an IBC tote is it is built strong enough to hold liquid. It already comes with a spout built in and it is built on a pallet. So if you have a set of pallet forks on a tractor like we do, you can pick up an IBC tote, it's ready to go. And it has a valve that opens and closes on the bottom to let the liquid out. I suggest finding an IBC tote that wasn't used to hold chemicals. Our IBC totes were used, I believe they were used for donut icing. When we got them, they smelled like strawberry. It was delicious. At the bottom of the IBC tote is a little spout with a handle that allows you to turn on and off the water. The spout coming out is not the right size to hook up a garden hose. And as you're gonna see up on the hill, you're going to wanna hook up a garden hose to your IBC tote. So you'll need to get an adapter. I'll have a link below. Amazon is full of these adapters. I've tried expensive ones. I've tried cheap ones. I'll link to my favorite. The adapter will take you from an IBC tote to a garden hose. And at that point, you can stretch out your garden hose as far as you can go with your chicken tractors off of a full IBC tote. Now, this doesn't have any pressure. I could attach a solar pump and that would increase pressure and make this a lot better. Right now, I just place my IBC tote on the highest area close to the chicken tractors and allow gravity to do the job of filling the chicken tractors. I open the valve at the bottom of the IBC tote. The weight of the water pushes down through the hose all the way to my chicken tractors. And I find when I put the hose in the back of the chicken tractor, right directly into the bucket, water that we use. The amount of time it takes me to put, fill the feeder of the chicken tractor, move the chicken tractor, all the things I have to do, it about matches the time it takes to fill the buckets in the back. So I can take the hose, put it in the water in the back, go around to the other side of the chicken tractor, open the door, fill the chicken tractor feeder up, come back around and by that time I can pull the hose out of the chicken waterer and move it to the next chicken tractor over and restart the process. You'll notice I actually have two IBC totes over here. One, two. Uh, one of them is painted green. I did that to prevent algae growth. Didn't really need it. That's why the other one isn't painted. If you don't go through the water quickly and you leave the top of the IBC tote open, there's a chance you'll get some algae to grow. But if you keep the cap on to prevent stuff from getting in the water, uh, you can put tablets in to keep your water from growing stuff that you know your livestock shouldn't have. Uh, and also, if you go through it quickly, you won't get any algae growth. So the green paint on this one, I didn't even bother with the other one, just unnecessary. You can also get covers for them. I've had other Homesteady audience members uh, tell me that they have tarp covers for them which work really good. Again, if I needed it, it'd be a good solution, but we just haven't really needed it. You're probably thinking, Aust, oh, doesn't the water in the tote get super hot on a summer day? No, it doesn't. Uh, not by the time I come out and do the chores. You see the water is cooled overnight. I come out and do the chores in the morning. I open it up and fill their waterers inside the chicken tractor, and then I'm done for the day. So if the water heats up throughout the rest of the day, it doesn't matter because I've given them cool water in the morning. So also not a problem. Now let's imagine you don't have a tractor. Most of you probably don't have a tractor with a pair of forks and you're not able to move an IBC tote. That's okay. You can mimic this 
uh, with a larger, you know, I, I used to use an igloo cooler, one of those big igloo water coolers that you see at sports games dumped under the coach. <laughs> I put that in the back of the UTV, drove it up, I had a hose connector coming out of the igloo cooler, and I would use that. If you have no UTV, tractor, any machines, then make sure not to run chicken tractors somewhere where you have to haul water far because hauling buckets to your chicken tractors is really a ton of work. These chickens will go through at their peak five gallons of water in a day. They can go through just about that. So that's a lot of water to haul. So try to keep it at least close enough where you can run a hose or if you have to carry buckets, make sure it's not too far. I water, then I come around the front of the chicken tractor, I put the feed in. Pretty much, the timing works pretty well with a gravity fed watering system. And uh, then the chicken tractors are pretty much done for the day. I don't think there's a better way to start raising meat for your family then a couple of John Siskovich chicken tractors and meat birds. Links below to all of John's stuff. I can't recommend it highly enough. And there's a special bundle if you want his book and his pastured poultry packet. If you get the bundle, you save a little bit of money and I can't recommend those two things enough. I use the pastured poultry packet every year to remind me the things I need to remember to keep the birds healthy. And the book with the uh, chicken tractor design plans is great. I love these chicken tractors. I've never used a better one and I have tried a lot of different versions. So I think you'll like them too. Click right here if you want to get John Siskovich's books or pasture poultry packet, his plans, and click right here to start back at the beginning of this series and see where we started with these chicks seven weeks ago.